The purpose of this screencast is to go over the Minnesota Interview Script Organizer. And first you're going to be writing a rough draft, and then you'll go back and make revisions and edits to your script. Um, to get started, let's look at the whole thing. First of all, it's laid out on two, there's two sides. There's the interviewer's side, and this is the interviewer, the person asking the questions. And then there's the important Minnesotan, or the person that you studied. I'll go over what goes inside an individual box, but starting out here, it has none, but you're going to put a picture of your person in here. So find a good um, resolution, so a high resolution picture to put in here of your individual that you studied. And then you see there's question one, or you have, sorry, introduction, question one, question two, question three, all the way to question 10, and then a closing. So really, you're asking 10 questions over the course of the whole interview. Now, if I were a sixth grader, I'd be thinking, well, you had me write down about 50 questions. Um, why is there only 10 on the actual interview? Well, we wanted you to think of a whole bunch of questions, and now you're doing that editing process in your mind and that revision process where you're coming up with really your top 10 questions that cover all the bases. So that brings us to the question generator. Inside your question generator, mine is blank, but yours is filled in. You are going to now be picking, you kind of have your broad questions, and this is a way of introducing the information, and I'll show you how you can use that broad question. And then you got all your specific questions. These are the ones that you actually are going to ask, so the interviewer is going to ask the important Minnesotan these questions. This is where you want to pick the really juicy ones, the ones that got a lot of info and tell us a lot about the person, his legacy or her legacy, the life and times of the person, um, any events that were going on and the person's connection to it, connection to Minnesota. You want to find the best questions for linking us to this big idea. Right? So this is where you're doing the editing process. Remember, 10 questions and probably in these boxes here on the left, you probably got well over 25, 30 questions. So you're going to have to do some editing with your partner but you're going to be using this to come up with the questions. Now, back to the script. Um, after you have thought about really good questions to ask during the interview, and you're covering all your bases, so all these big topics, meaning early life, background, accomplishments, connection to Minnesota, the times in which they lived, and impact, all those topics need to be covered. After you've thought about it, then you want to divide the information amongst the 10 questions. So maybe you want to give two questions to early life or life outside of their big event. Maybe two more questions um, go on to what was going on around the person's life that was important. Then maybe three questions on the person's important contribution, because really that's the biggest thing, right? So maybe dedicate three questions to that. And then maybe two questions can go toward um, their connection to Minnesota, and one, one question or two questions towards the end can go towards um, their legacy or their impact on the world after they kind of were moved on or, or passed away. So that's the way you would divide it up. Um, remember, we have only 10 questions because you have about five minutes, five to seven minutes to give this presentation or this interview, and we're really shooting for five minutes. Um, now, an individual box. The interviewer has to introduce, so we'll start with the introduction box. You'll see the interviewer introduces him or herself, and then they provide kind of some facts about the person they're about to interview. Then they're going to tell the viewer where the interview is taking place, and this is where you're going to set up your scenario, or that scenario, however you want to say it, where you're going to be making your interview believable, giving us context, providing a reason for the interview that makes sense. For example, if you are interviewing a corrupt cop, you may be in the interrogation room putting him under the hot lights, right? 
That was one of the examples we gave when we introduced the project. So this is where you set up that scenario. Then you jump in and you'll notice nothing comes from the from the person being interviewed. He or she is waiting to be asked a question. Then you go down to question one. In question one, everybody needs to preface the question. So interviewers preface the question. And when they preface the question, that means they set the question up. And a good interviewer usually gives facts about the person before they ask the question. So for example, if I'm doing question one and two, I'm going to divide that up into the life of an enslaved person if I'm doing Dred Scott. For this first question, I might set it up by saying, Mr. Scott, I know you worked as an enslaved person all your life. This must have been challenging. Then I could list things that were challenging that enslaved people had to face, whether it was working in the fields, or it could be working in the home, hours that the person had to work as an enslaved person, restrictions and rules on plantations, which is the places where most enslaved people worked. And you can see you want to write in complete sentences, but then you want to preface your question, provide some facts. Once you've prefaced the question, then you can actually ask your question. So I've kind of prefaced, okay, here's what the life of an enslaved person was like. Then I might want to ask, Mr. Scott, what was your experience as an enslaved person like? What challenges did you face? So, And then without getting into the details of the court case, Mr. Scott would respond to the question. And he needs to acknowledge the question. Like say, thank you for asking me this question. Yes, it is difficult to remember these hard parts of my life, but it is important that I share the details of an enslaved person's life. And then Mr. Scott right here would go into providing a response to what the challenges that he personally faced. So this is where the research comes into play. So you can see research is coming all over the place. You're going to be using it to preface the questions right here. You'll be using your question generator or your question organizer to ask the actual question. You'll be using your research here to, to respond to the question and then really using your research here when you actually are acknowledging the question, really using your research here when you respond to the question. So after I've covered early life and maybe life as an enslaved person, then maybe questions three, four, and five, that's when I really want to go into maybe the court case. So I'm going to pick my best questions for that, um, for Mr. Scott to answer about his particular court case. So to look at some examples that people have done in the past, here is someone who, someone who did Wanda Gag. And you can see how they introduce, hello, I am Priscilla Universe, and I am here today on February 18th, 1947. So they went back in time, interviewing Wanda Gay for an article I'm writing. So the person's a journalist. Then they go on to explain a little bit about Wanda Gag's accomplishments, writing millions of cats. Then we are in the actual home of Wanda Gag. So there they are visiting the home where she lives now in New Jersey. So Wanda Gag probably is an older person. And then... I'm here 
to ask her a few questions about her childhood, majorhood accomplishments, and life after that. And then we got the image of Wanda. And you can see question one is about childhood and the response. And she doesn't acknowledge the question. She should have here. And then question two, it looks like we have how else is it difficult family question. So still kind of that life outside of major accomplishments. And then when we get here, it looks like, oh, after father's death, you kept a diary growing. Now we're starting to get into her accomplishments or her work by question three. And you can see, oh, and another piece here is after Wanda Gag responds to a question, the interviewer acknowledges the response. He or she doesn't just move into the next question. That does not, that does sound very challenging. So acknowledging the fact that Wanda Gag had some challenges in her family life. I guess that makes sense because the Great Depression was happening during this whole time. So we also maybe got some Great Depression information in here too. So acknowledging the response is important. Here's another example. <clears throat> and this one doesn't look like it was quite completed. This is Joseph Godfrey. And theirs doesn't look as juicy in terms of what they got the interviewer asking. Interviewer is not setting up the questions which is with as much info, but then we do at least have some good solid responses here for some of them. This is another example, but the Wanda Gag one really looks good. So, once you have gotten the go-ahead, you have all your notes, and you have your question organizer completed, then you are ready to start working on this, your first draft of the script. And if you have any questions beyond this point, you should ask your teacher. All right. Thanks for listening.